how can I learn to become more resilient? Which is fantastic. So what, that's why research is worthwhile. You find out what people do, and then you say, right, okay, what, what can I do to build resilience? How can I reframe something which was an overwhelming problem into a challenge? Okay, so the first thing is to recognize that stuff happens, that shit happens, that you, in, in life, you have control over certain things and you have no control over a lot of other things. So the first is to recognize that in life, stump, something is going to happen to you, which is going to be, which is not going to be good. And, and, and it's not going to be something that's going to be, a, a, events are going to occur that aren't so good. And that as that, as that event occurs, which is just part of life. It is just part, bad stuff happens to good people and it is just part of life expected to happen at some stage and um, recognize that when it does happen, that often it's actually not personal. It is just how things are. Okay, so to recognize, that's the first thing. The second is then to uh, in this situation, recognize what you have control over and what you don't have control over. And what you have control over is your reaction to whatever the situation is. That you have control over. As we looked at all the things that people who are resilient do under those circumstances, this is what you have control over. And interestingly, it's a bit like if you look at chronic pain, you don't have control over to, to quite a large extent, what your pain system is going to, going to do next. Your pain system will present pain as it does, but you have tremendous control over and power over how you're going to react to that pain message. In the same way, in terms of resilience in life, you have often no control over what life throws at you, but you have a tremendous amount of control over how you're going to respond. So that's the, the first the first lesson. When that situation comes, okay, the uh, first thing is to uh, recognize the that uh, to be not alone is that to reach out when a situation, oh my God, this has happened, right. So, uh, to reach out to somebody or people who can help. So you share the situation. It's very important, it's super important. That's for your base, you're not alone. And then you need to look at the situation because now you're looking at your reaction, you take advice from from people and at the end of that, of course, the decisions are yours and you, you look at and you say, okay, what can I do? What can I do? And you then set yourself a goal which is achievable in this situation. And every day you say to yourself, what is the one thing that I can do that will bring me closer to the goal that I have set? So, as I said before, everything has to be real. You have to know your strengths and your weaknesses. You've taken advice. You may have read, you may have whatever you've done. You've spoken to people. You've sorted out. You said, right, okay, this is the, I see the problem. Oops, I see the challenge. I now have set myself a goal and every day, what is the one thing that I can do that will bring me closer to that goal? And as you do it or after you have done it, you then look inside and note how doing it or deciding to do it makes you feel that little bit better. The 
big step actually when I said doing it or thinking about doing it is in fact the next huge step is actually the doing so you have to take action if you're that rabbit and the car's coming at you all you have to do is take three hops to the left or the right if, if, <laughs> if I'm in New Zealand uh, where they drive on the left hand side you, you have to hop to the left and if you're in, in, in most of the rest of the world you have to hop to the right and the car will zoom by so the only way resilient people respond is that they once they've thought they've been cognitively flexible they've thought seen the situation reframed it and then they have made a plan they've worked out a goal and then you do it you absolutely you take action and the next day you take action again and the next day you take action again so it is often that's the beautiful japanese concept of kaizen is that little steps as you add those little steps along so uh, it's one you know a journey of a thousand miles is take you all you need is your first step then your second step, then your third step, your fourth step. So the essence here is to know that there is never a problem for which there is no solution or there are no solutions. There's always, it's never a problem. It's never so overwhelming. Once you've been hit, you, you think, whoa, okay. And then you go still, you manage those emotions. You manage your impulses and then you reach out, you get advice, you fall still, you start making a plan and the plan will involve you taking action. And it doesn't, it may be, and it hardly ever is, that there's a whiz-bang solution and pa I'm better. No, because you have to chip away, always working away that, and this is the essence of being resilient, absolutely. And then what you have to know, and I think this is wonderful advice, is that in life you grow through handling adversity. If you've had a life that's completely untrammeled, uh, I mean, you've been very fortunate, but in fact, if you look at people who just live a superficial little cruisy life in a little bubble, what they lack and what you get by facing adversity, by, by being struck with adversity, by facing up, by solving it, is that you get, you get tougher, you get more adaptable you become more compassionate, you become more empathetic, you understand something which you cannot do unless you've walked that, walked that walk. And in the end, you become wiser. So you grow through adversity as long as you change that adversity into a challenge and then apply what I've talked about, which is apply the principles of how to be resilient so that in the end you end up wiser stronger and the whatever the problem was you have solved it as much as you can and your life and you're moving on you grow through life 